Hey, what's up guys? Hope everybody's doing well and having a great day. In this video, we're going to take a closer look at one of the largest earthquakes ever recorded on U.S. soil, a 7.3 magnitude quake at the Yellowstone Supervolcano. Occurred back in 1959. I just finished reading a book from a man who was at the epicenter of the earthquake 24 hours after it occurred during rescue operations. I've got some details that you may not know about from that historic event. But before we get started, I need a quick favor from you guys. Nothing big. I just need to know how the audio sounds. Is the audio good? If it does sound decent on your end, please leave a G in the comment section. G for good. If it needs improving, please tell me what I can do to make it better. I do these videos the same every single time, but for some reason I'll get comments from people that, that say the audio is messed up in some way or another, but they don't give me any specifics. So if it does need improving, let me know what I can do. But if it's good, leave me a G. And that's important too because I need to know if the audio is decent. And if it does need fixed, I want to make it better. But I do these the same every single time. I never adjust just the audio. And anyway, we're going to go up to Canada now where back on June 29th there was a, a record high temperature of 121 degrees in Lytton, British Columbia. There was also another temperature recorded in Hay River, Canada, which is in the Northwestern Territory, way up here near the 60 degree. In fact, it's just above the 60 degree latitude. Look at that, 122 degrees. This was sent in by Tanya. She said her outdoor thermometer showed a staggering 50 degrees Celsius, which equates to 122 degrees Fahrenheit again 3 p.m. June 29th of 2021 and that would be up at Hay River which is near the 60 degree north latitude I don't know how that was even possible to get that hot that close to the Arctic Circle that is absolutely incredible so I know there were more than likely more places many more places across Canada that just absolutely crushed records by many degrees in some cases I don't know what the record was in Hay River but I'm sure Sure, that is a double digit new record high so again I don't even know how it was able to get that hot that high up in the northern latitudes of the planet over here at the website quick look at the Schumann resonance you can see not too much going on a little bit of background noise all in all pretty quiet hopping over to the Yellowstone supervolcano caldera looking at the seismographs that monitor the mighty supervolcano once again, seeing earthquake signatures. This one over here at Hebgen Lake is not far from the epicenter of the earthquake that we're going to talk about in this video. It's one of the reasons why we come here every day, and I started doing it in videos every day. I've always came here. I have for over a decade. I used to come and look at these seismographs many years ago when there wasn't anything to see at all but a blank seismograph. So to come over here and see these things with all different colors of blue and now red, which are earthquake signatures and again that's where the 7.3 occurred that's why I come here every day and now you see earthquake activity in this location where there was one of the largest earthquakes that ever occurred in the United States it occurred right there so when we see activity here at the super volcano I know the potential is there for something big so we watch it pretty close speaking of big we're looking at the Lake Mead water reservoir behind the very large Hoover Dam and once again another record set the the reading on June 30th of 2021 1,068 now, another new record low. Lake Mead is the primary water source for millions of people, and it provides electricity for millions of people in the Southern California area. Now an update on the potential hurricanes, now tropical storm, Elsa. It's headed towards the Lesser Antilles, the smaller islands down in the Southern Caribbean. Here's a satellite presentation. This was taken just a few minutes ago. Not very well organized at the moment it's a large storm it, it's got a big frame but there's no eye wall yet no obvious center of rotation but if that thing ever does get up to full steam if it stays south and what I mean by south is if it stays south of the islands the Dominican Republic Cuba 
it makes its way through the Central Caribbean up into the Gulf of Mexico, more than likely you'll see some type of hurricane, whether it be a small, medium, quite possibly a large hurricane. I don't know. It all depends on its path. But if it goes through those larger islands, it will definitely not have a chance to get organized. And number two, it's moving west-northwest at 28 miles per hour. It's moving very, very quickly. And I kind of have a feeling this thing is going to drift south. I think it's going to stay pretty much in the center of the Caribbean. So look for this storm to kind of get more organized over the next 48 to 72 hours. I wouldn't be a bit surprised if it's not at least a Category 1 hurricane by the time it gets parallel with Cuba um, in the Jamaica area. Not necessarily a high-end Cat 5 storm, but I do look for it to become a hurricane in the coming days. Over here at SpaceWeather.com, I wanted to touch base real quick on a surprise interplanetary shockwave that interacted with the Earth yesterday on June 30th, sparking auroras and a small geomagnetic storm. That one was, like I said, a surprise kind of came out of nowhere. Now I want to take you guys back to one of the largest earthquakes that ever occurred on U.S. soil. The 7.3 magnitude quake ranks up there in the top 25 coming in at 23. Right there it is, a 7.3. It actually occurred on August 17th at 11.37 p.m. There were many, many aftershocks that occurred right after the primary 7.3 quake near Hebgen Lake, Montana, which is one of the seismographs that we look at every single day. So when you see earthquake activity on there and you know that years ago there was a very large earthquake in that exact area, it makes you want to watch the area even closer and closer, just like the swarm that we saw there last month, less than two weeks ago. Here's the swarm. Here's Hebgen Lake. You can see how close the swarm was to Hebgen Lake, and that's where the center of the 7.3 quake was at. I wanted to share with you guys some details about the, the very large quake that occurred back in 1959 from a man who wrote a book about his experience who was at the epicenter of the earthquake 24 hours after it happened. The book is the Montana Yellowstone Earthquake and it was written back in 1959. I'm going to share with you guys some photos from this book that was sent to me by Shelley from Wisconsin. I want to thank you Shelley. I greatly appreciate that. I read the book in one day. The gentleman that wrote the book, his name is Ed Christofferson. He went to the earthquake site 24 hours after it occurred. Here's a map of everything that was going on. Here you can see Hebgen Lake. A new lake was formed after the earthquake occurred. There was a huge mountain slide that you can still see today on Google Earth. In fact, I'll take you to that area. We're going to go down to West Yellowstone. I'm going to take you to the exact location. You can still see it to this day on Google Earth. Here's West Yellowstone. Here's Grayling. There's Hebgen Lake. The epicenter was right here near Hebgen Lake. And that's one of the very active seismographs that we look at every single day. Here's where the mountain fell. And you can see right there's where the mountain fell. That's what they were talking about. This right here collapsed, came down here onto Madison River. It created a new lake. They named the lake Earthquake Lake which is right there. They have a visitor center today. You can drive up to the lake. You can get the history about what occurred here back in 1959, nearly 62 years ago. Unfortunately, there were people in this area that still to this day, there's a monument underneath all of these rocks. There were people camping here that were never found. I'm going to share with you now some pictures from this area that were in the book sent in by Shelley out of Wisconsin. You can see a fence here that mimicked the seismic waves that went through the ground. Look at that fence. Mimic the waves. Now that is one unique way of recording a primary wave. Look at that. Extends for probably a couple hundred yards and it didn't break. Unbelievable. And that was near the epicenter of the earthquake. Here's a photo of a car that got twisted around a tree. Many trees came down that mountainside, which is right here. Many trees. They said that the, the winds in that area after the earthquake occurred and the rock slide took off, there were winds in excess of 170 miles per hour hurricane force winds. Here you can see a car that went airborne, was wrapped around a tree. Just an unbelievable scene. This man was there right after this earthquake occurred. You're looking at a house here that was built back in the late 1950s. This was called the Culligan House. And have you guys ever heard of the, the Culligan Water, the Culligan Man? Well, this is the founder's home 
of Culligan Water. After World War II and the Hiroshima thing, he came here and built a house that was supposedly nuclear proof. But one thing it wasn't prepared for was an earthquake. It did not survive the 7.3 magnitude earthquake. Now, once again, this home, this large bunker, belonged to the man that started Culligan Water. Here you see a house that dropped down into Hebgen Lake. The house obviously used to be way up here. The person that lived there, Grace Miller, used to rent out small boats and kayaks to people to use at Hebgen Lake. And her house, intact, fell right into the lake. In fact, here's a color photo of that same location at Wikipedia. There it is in the book. This was taken on site back in 1959. All of these photos, with the exception of this one, are from the book. This one here looks like to me it was just transferred over to a color format. You're looking at a campground not far from the big rock slide that came down the mountain. There were, unfortunately, people here under those rocks at that campsite. Right after the earthquake occurred, those large boulders came down the mountain. Here's another view of the same campsite, just a different location. You can see a large tree over here on top of that car, and there's another view of those large boulders, and once again, there were people, unfortunately, there at that campsite. Here's a side view of the mountain slide that you can see at Google Earth. Still there, hasn't changed 62 years ago. And that was a photo taken 24 hours after it occurred, and there were still aftershocks occurring in that area. Here's a straight-on view of the large mountain slide that ended up creating what we now know today as Earthquake Lake. And you can see two faults here at Hebgen Lake, the Red Canyon Fault and the Hebgen Lake Fault. That's why we come here every single day and look at the seismographs, especially in this area. And there is a seismograph at Hebgen Lake, not far from the 7.3 magnitude quake that did alter the sequence of geysers. The large quake disrupted the sequence of geysers, actually created 160 new geysers after the quake. This is a building up in Virginia City, about 60 miles away from the large earthquake, and you can see the damage that occurred to a building 60 miles away. Here's a drawing of some people that were trapped on the other side of the lake. They made this distress signal out of bags of white flour, okay, SOS, so it would be visible from the sky. They were trapped on the other side of the new lake that was formed and needed to be rescued, and it did work. Here's a photo of people being airlifted by airplane to West Yellowstone Airport. Gentlemen here being transported by car. They gathered up all the station wagons that they could. They made up a makeshift hospital at the West Yellowstone Airport hangar, and that photo was taken within 24 hours of the very large 7.3 magnitude earthquake that once again occurred right over here near Hebgen Lake at the super volcano. That's why, or that's one of the reasons why, we come here every day and keep a close eye on these seismographs that have a story to tell every day. And it seems like they're starting to talk more and more. I can assure you, 10 years ago, you could come over here and you would not see one single blip on any of these seismographs. They used to be very, very quiet. And that's one of the reasons why we come over here, especially keep a close eye on the Hebgen Lake area, which you can see there are signs right now of a lot of small earthquake activity and that could go on for weeks months who knows maybe years I have no idea but one thing I do know there was a swarm not far from one of the largest earthquakes in US history a 7.3 magnitude earthquake that occurred nearly 62 years ago at the mighty Yellowstone supervolcano thanks for watching have a super day and be safe out there.